Landing your dream job starts with a killer resume. For the past four years, I've been writing resumes, CVs, with 90% of my clients coming from referrals. I must be doing something right, right? So in this video, I'll spill all the bins on how to create a resume, a CV, that stands out. Strategies and techniques that have helped my clients secure both local and international jobs. No gatekeeping here. I don't gatekeep on this channel. So if this is a topic you're interested in, you definitely want to watch this video from the start to finish because it's packed with so much valuable information that will take you from here to here in your job search. And if you're interested in my professional ATS optimized template, check out the link in the description and in the pinned comment. And if you're seeking personalized assistance, use the link in the description as well and reach out to me on WhatsApp and let's work together. So without wasting your time, empower this video with a like and support this channel by hitting the subscribe button. I have a target of reaching 10K subscribers this year. <laughs> okay, and oh, comment where you're watching this video from. Let's do this. Now you have a blank canvas in front of you. Before you even begin writing your first word, keep this in mind. Your CV has to be easy to read. And what does this entail? You need to use a font and font size that is pleasing that is easy on the eye that I can read. You cannot use a font size of, let's say, 10 and expect. You might be cool with it. Personally, my phone font size is, if I can reduce it to five, I'll do that. And I'll still be able to read my chats. I'll still be able to send messages. But there are people who will look at the text on my phone and be like, how do you read this? Okay, so it's convenient for you. It doesn't mean it's convenient for another. So you might be able to read your text in 10. But professionally, what is ideal for you to use is from I use 11. It depends on the font you're using anyways. So from 11, 12, 13 is appropriate. Don't use 15. 15 will be too large and it will look weird. <laughs> okay, so make sure you have a consistent font and a consistent font size, except your header. Let's say your work experience or your professional summary, you can increase that if you want to. I keep mine consistent. The only place I increase the font size is my client's name. Yes. I actually used 20 on that one because I needed to be very bold. Oh, this is my client and her name is Infonakpan. <laughs> I need that name to stick in your head as a recruiter. So I use 20 for that. Another thing I want to share with you, this is my opinion, by the way, when it comes to your CV format is you don't need two columns. Just use one. Keep it simple. You know, I said it has to be easy to read. Okay, I don't want to be going right and going left. Where did this person put the work experience? Where did this person put the education? Where can I find your skill? I'm looking for it in the left. I'm looking for it in the right. I don't want to go through that as a recruiter. It takes like six to seven seconds for recruiters to go through your resume. So it's risky for you to use different columns. You are using, you are sharing it because you want it to be pleasing in the eyes or you want it to start. You're not, your CV is not for you. People, you have to understand. I don't know how to stress this enough. You have to understand that your CV is not for you. Your CV is for the recruiter. Your CV is for the hiring manager. So you have to do what we please them. It's not for you. You're not the consumer at this point. Okay. So you have to please the consumer, which is the recruiter. Keep your CV in one color, straight. No need to draw line or four lines. There's no need for that. Second plan. Now let's talk colors. We're still talking about CV format. Let's talk colors. I don't know why people like colors on their resume, on their CV, but this, you don't need it. Okay. You don't need to color. You don't need a colorful CV, except you are in the creative industry. Let's say you are a fashion designer. Yeah. And even at that, you don't have to use colors that when I look at it, I say, I will not be able to look at the information. I'll not be able to extract the information I need because of color, color everywhere. So even if you are trying to keep it creative, you're working in the creative industry, just make it mild, okay? You don't want to scare us. You don't want to scare the recruiter. As I said, your CV is not for you. Let's talk CV size. A pager resume or a pager CV will always be lit. <laughs> if you can keep your information in a page, oh, I don't know. There's a word I want to use, but I don't think it's appropriate for this video. <laughs> okay, but let's say you have so many, you have so much experience. Maximum should be two pages. I won't share how I revamped a CV of eight pages. When the man sent it to me, I was like, what's going on? Filled with job duties and responsibilities, not even achievements. 
maximum should be two pages except you are in managerial position or except you have like 20 years 30 years of experience you're an executive then we're talking three pages max anything that exceeds three pages as an executive what are we writing create a linkedin profile put all your details there okay now let's talk personal information no one cares about your nationality okay no one cares about your ethnicity no one cares if you were born in 2000 2004 no one cares about your marital status no one cares about your gender except it's a specific requirement based on the job maybe they're hiring just male yes you can add that you're a male but aside that if it's not a specific requirement that's why i always tell you go through the job description okay if it's not a specific requirement don't add it to your cv okay this might cause problem for you go there might just be somebody on the panel among the recruiters they'll be like oh this one is a female whoa i beg seriously and that brings me to you don't need your picture you don't need your photo on your resume except again if it's a specific requirement let's say you're applying for a modeling role definitely you that one self i think that one self is portfolio you need but let's say they are asking for your resume you will definitely need your picture on it yes so depending on the role and the requirements from the hiring managers if they are not requesting for any of this please remove your picture remove your photo cards from your resume it's not important the only personal information you need on your resume on your cv is your name your first and last name your email address your professional email address no baby girl one two three no gen z 2005 buddy please take that off go to google create a professional email address okay and the next thing you need is your phone number we don't need your street address don't include your street address and your house number on your resume you can just add the city and the state country if you want to that's fine okay and then the next information you need is your linkedin url if it's not optimized don't add it though they will still check it out so you should optimize your linkedin to sync with your resume okay now let's talk professional summary your professional summary should be brief and impactful don't write an ac and you should tailor it to the job you are applying for don't write an ac here so there is this new thing i'm trying out with my clients <laughs> i'm not adding professional summary anymore i just start your resume your personal information and then the other details if i'm doing a functional resume i start with a skill work experience education if i'm doing chronological i start with a work experience skill education certification and what i do is i take all of the self-expression all the storytelling to their linkedin profile i basically do this for people that want to write their resume and optimize their linkedin profile with me so yeah but you can use a professional summary, but keep it brief, concise, and impactful, tailored to the job you're applying for. Now, let's talk skill section. In your skill section, you should get keywords from the job description. This is very important, especially if your resume is going through an ATS. You need those keywords. Those keywords are super important. You can see a job posting and, oh, let's say they are hiring for um, a customer service manager, and you'll be like, oh, you check the deadline okay they are still open and you rush you go and dust your resume you dust your cv wherever you kept it and apply without up updating your resume i know this can be daunting getting to update your resume optimize your resume for each application it can be daunting but it's worth it if your job search is serious to you then this is something you really want to be doing okay you need to optimize your resume to suit the job you're applying for so get keywords from the job description and add to this skill section let me show you an example let's head to linkedin now and let me show you what i'm talking about so briefly this is business development manager position so what are the keywords that we can use here we can use business development management we can go through the core responsibilities and extract keywords from there here we have strategic planning you can see pipeline management and if you read the text if you read the bullet points beneath each of these highlighted core responsibilities you can get keywords from there as well expertise in intel technology with a thorough understanding of ai and hpc you do definitely want to add ai and hpc to your skill section business development communication problem solving sales oriented 
So there are two ways you can go about this. You can either just list the key skills, the business development, sales, AI, problem solving, communication, or you can list out five key skills. Let's say business development, sales, AI, proficiency, problem solving, communication. And then you write a sentence for each of the skills of how you've actually use the skills in your work experiences, in your job. A sentence. I'm not saying if you write AC. If you can spice it up with some metrics, numbers, figures, do it. Okay. Now let's talk education. You do not need your secondary school qualification here. You don't need your primary school education here. All you need is your university qualification. Your first degree, your master's keeps going up, okay? You don't need to bring in your secondary school. Nobody cares about that. Except you're applying for a civil service. This is for my Nigerians now. Aside that, employers don't care about where you attended your secondary school. All right, another thing I see people, another mistake I see people make when it comes to this section is that, this is for my Nigerians as well, <laughs> they bring in their education here. Sorry, they bring in their NYSC. They will just put their education and then you see them writing NYSC. Why? So you don't have to do that. But the only details you need here is the name of the university, what you studied in school and that's it you don't have to put your year of graduation except you are a recent graduate and you're applying for entry level or graduate trainee all right now let's talk your work experience in your work experience section start with your position your role the company the location and the date month and year for instance let's say you started working in a particular place now i'm talking about your present role let's say you started working from april 2024 what you need to put there is april 2024 hyphen present all right so that's it for the header now for the job description don't spark job duties and i managed sales <laughs> spice it up with metrics for instance you cannot just say manage sales or responsible for sales management in mm here -hmm, that's better responsible for sales management saying better doesn't mean you should use it i'm not saying that's what you should use instead of saying that say increase sales by 20 percent in the first quarter oh that sounds better some numbers spice it up with some numbers i guess we're excited when i say numbers see <laughs> on my client's cv and i'll be like this person yes my work is going to be very easy imagine that imagine a recruiter saying that that you're able to sit down. You might not be able to, to really quantify this in your workplace, but the ability to sit down and say, okay, let me quantify my achievement. A recruiter will look at you and be like, okay, this person pays attention to details. The ability to do that is a skill on its own that I will appreciate as a recruiter. So don't just fill in the space with job duties and responsibilities only. Spice it up with some achievements. And your bullet point should not be more than five anything more than that you're writing ac keep it my my cv i have just three bullet points i don't care the amount of achievements i achieved in a particular place of work it's just three just one two three it's just three each of my work experiences it's just three lines you don't have to do it like misha but maximum should be five especially for your present role for subsequent roles just keep it three to four all right okay so while i'm still talking about achievements one mistake i see that my clients make is that they separate the achievement they create a section a different section for the achievement for instance now we're talking about increased sales by 20 percent by the first quarter or in the first quarter you see them put that as a bullet point and followed by authors and then the rest of the work experience is just jobs and job duties and responsibilities when you look at the achievements they don't even include where they actually had this achievement where they which of the company let's say increase sales by 20 percent by the first quarter in abc they don't even do that they just and i'm like where did you achieve this one where did you achieve this one so instead of doing all of that and filling up the rest of the job description with duties and responsibilities just mix them up okay two job responsibilities three achievements that's dope <laughs> forgive my use of word but yeah that's lit okay so that's it for your work experience another important section of your cv is your certification and your professional memberships if you have one now this is an important section 
if you are applying for a job in business development, if you know you want to pursue a career in business development, I believe it's important that you put in the work, you put in the effort and take courses take certification it's easy it's it's so easy there are so many free certifications that you can take you can take courses from coursera yes you have to pay for them but there is a way you can apply for financial aid and take paid courses for free check out this video on how you can do that as you gain the certification as you gain the skills make sure to update your resume update your linkedin profile as well so that they sync okay this will give you an edge let's say i have two candidates in front of me i have their resume in front of me and one has a certification that aligns with the role i am hiring for and the other person doesn't who do you think i will hire i will hire this person it shows that you're investing in your professional development you're learning you care about your career if you don't care about your career how would you care about my work <laughs> jokes apart this is important take courses online and update your resume it's free also if you have relevant volunteering experience put them in here if they are not relevant don't add them okay so before i talk about my best practices reference available on request is just wasting space on your resume and don't add references you're basically infringing on the privacy of these people <laughs> yes because you don't know where your cv is going to you're, you're exposing their phone numbers you're exposing their email address to people you don't even know except is a specific requirement from the hiring manager don't add it except it's on the online platform yes where you're filling the form you can do that and they request for it and it's compulsory you can do that but if it's not then don't add it to your resume and don't add reference available on request now to my best practices save your cv in pdf format don't save it in Word. When you send your CV in PDF, it maintains the content of the CV. It maintains the format. It will appear the way you saw it on your system. You saw it on your computer. But if you send it as Word, you don't know what I'm using to open your CV. It's, your name will be in this side, your surname this way, and everything will just, all the information will be fighting against each other. Your CV will just be all over the place. You don't want that. So save your CV in PDF and it should be saved with your first and last name. Let's say in front Akban underscore CV. Don't save it first draft, main CV, updated CV. <laughs> I have seen a lot of things. Number two, tailor the CV to the job role and the company you're applying to. Number three, learn how to send your CV via email. Oh my God. <laughs> I saw a lot. I have seen a lot of things which prompted this video. So please, if you don't know how to send your CV via email to an employer, it's nothing to be ashamed of. We learn every day. Please make sure to watch this video after this one, okay? Please. Next, please read your CV. Read your CV. Read your CV. Even if you gave it to somebody to revamp for you, read your CV when you receive it. Read your CV. How can you tell me you pay attention to details and I'm looking at your CV, you spell manager as menja. <laughs> make it make sense. Please make it make sense. Read your CV. Lastly, pay attention to little things. For instance, you might use a particular date format, April 2024. Yes. And then in your second work experience, you're using 04 slash 2024. You have to maintain that format. Pay attention to little things like that. Another thing, do you know that there are different types of dash you can use? It's this longer one and then there's this shorter one. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm putting this on you, but this is what I do for my clients. This is what I've been doing for years. So it has, I think it has created a space in my head. Is the, <laughs> I'm sounding like someone that has koi koi, but it's true. I pay attention to these things, right? Not this, other section the dash is longer than this one i pay attention to all of these things so you should too because recruiters pay attention to these things especially if it's a role that requires you to have excellent attention to details you have to prove that on your resume okay and don't forget to read your cv all right and the professional ats optimized template is in the description the link is in the description and in the pinned comment and if you like to work with me directly use the link the whatsapp link 
in the description and in the pinned comment as well send me a message on whatsapp and uh, i can't wait to work with you thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was helpful and if you found value in this video kindly give it a thumbs up share with your friends and families subscribe if you've not yet thank you so much for watching i'll see you in this video Thank you.